Hi, I'm Tom Nelson. This is Making a Calotype, Part 2. Our coated paper is dry now and it's ready to expose. I have a piece of hardboard that I've painted black. The digital negative goes down next. It has a higher contrast side and a milky side. The contrast side is the printed side and the milky side goes up. Next is a paper mask that shields any parts of the paper that have a uh, sensitizer on them that I don't want. And finally, a piece of plate glass. I hold everything in place with spring clips. UV safe goggles on, I'm ready to expose. I do my exposing in my workshop. I have a dim incandescent light to help me see where to put the contact frame. The ultraviolet lamp hangs from the ceiling 30 inches above the negative. I put down the contact frame, start the timer on my watch, and turn on the ultraviolet lamp. Then I leave the room. While the print is exposing, I get the dark room ready under room lights. I'm pouring the developer out very carefully and you'll see why in a moment. The oxidized iron salts from previous prints sink to the bottom of the bottle and I pour them out. After I wash the bottle, I replenish the developer with 130 cc of stock solution for a 9 by 12 print. The other developer will go back into the bottle after I use it. After development, I'm going to rinse the print twice. For permanence, it's important to keep the rinse slightly acidic. I'm using a tiny bit of citric acid, perhaps a sixteenth of a teaspoon, in a one liter beaker. I've tested this with my pH test strips and it makes my tap water a little bit acidic. I pour in deionized water to make one liter. Citric dissolves easily and the turbulence is enough to dissolve it. I've got the safe light on and I'm ready to process. As I get the contact frame, I wear UV safe goggles to protect my eyes. The exposure leaves a slight image that you can see. It's crucial to pour the developer over the print all at once. You'd think with a 10 minute development time, a few seconds difference wouldn't matter, but you'd be wrong. I figure you have about a second to submerge the print or you'll get permanent development marks. I'm going to develop it for 10 minutes with constant agitation. During this whole time, the print looks too dark. There are still a lot of iron compounds in the emulsion, and the developer dissolves some and helps the rest react with silver. Even though the image comes up immediately, give a full 10-minute development. At the end of the development period, I pour the developer out to be returned to the bottle along with the replenisher I put in before. I'm going to pour in half of my acidified rinse water and agitate for two minutes. I'm waiting for the timer to end here. After two minutes, I pour out the rinse water and add the other half of it. I give it another two minutes under constant agitation.
After the two-part rinse, I pour in a clearing bath of 3% citric acid. It begins dissolving the unexposed iron compounds left in the emulsion. At the end of this process, you'll notice that the shadows lighten alarmingly. Don't worry, we'll get them back later. After a one minute rinse in running water, I pour in the toner. For calotypes, gold, platinum, and palladium are the most common. This is the only expensive part of the process, and I only use 100 milliliters as a one-shot solution. A flat bottom tray is helpful to let you use the minimal amount. During toning, the weak shadows begin to darken. The color changes from a chocolate brown to a more neutral brown. The color of the final print is primarily determined by the toner, not the developer. Gold toner gives a neutral black, palladium a yellowish brown, and platinum a lighter, more greenish brown. The toner replaces the iron and silver compounds with a noble metal that will not oxidize. Toning of calotypes is necessary to make them archivally permanent. At the end of the toning process, the palladium in the toner has transferred to the print and I pour out the exhausted remainder. There's another tap water rinse, then the fixer. Notice that we tone before fixing. The toner protects the lighter values from being bleached by the fix. During fixing, the darkest values continue to deepen. The print takes on its final look, except the very lightest values look too light. I'm skipping a few steps here that you don't need to see. After fixing, there's another one minute wash, then hypoclear for another minute, then a final 20 minute wash. At the end of the wash, I hang it to dry. The highlight values still look a little light, but they'll dry down. Here's the print once it's dry. There's no trace of the border of sensitizer I left around the print, telling me that all unexposed sensitizer has been cleared. The image has a pleasing, light sepia tone and a pretty intense black. That's why I love calotypes. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below. Here's the sequence of development. Develop for 10 minutes. Rinse number one, two minutes in acidified water. Rinse number two, two minutes in acidified water. Clearing bath, two minutes in 3% citric acid. Wash, one minute in tap water. Tone for between two and 10 minutes. Rinse, another one minute in tap water. Fix for two minutes. Wash one minute in tap water, hypoclear one minute, and wash for final time 20 minutes in tap water.